Have you ever felt that the wrench you are getting out of your FPV system is not as good as it should be? Because some people report that they fly 10 kilometers one way on 5.8 gigahertz system without any special antenna trackers, just regular antennas stick on the airplane and on the goggles and everything works just fine, while you are struggling to get a clear vision at less than one kilometer and in some of the cases you are not really able to fly much further than a few hundred meters of yards. If yes, then I'm Paweł Spychalski and this video is definitely for you. The range of the FPV feed and any other radio system depends on many elements inside of the link because transmitter, feed line, antenna, then everything that happens between the transmitter and the receiver antenna and then one more time the antenna, the feed line, the decoder, the output from the receiver, from the decoder of the video signal to the LCD. If any of those elements has some problems then you will get squat instead of good and clear video feed. It applies to 5.8, 2.4, 1.3 GHz vision and not only vision because also audio and the control we are using in our radio. So in today's video I will get through the, let's say the most probable cases of why your radio is not performing as well as it should be performing and let's begin with the simple one. The most obvious source of the problem and sometimes really almost the hardest to locate is the physical damage of the antenna, feed line, the wire that connects the transmitter to your antenna and connectors. Because those things we fly on every day like to crash. And during the crash, well, a lot of things can happen and a lot of things can bend it. And even at the first glance, the antenna should be behaving just fine. It's really not. Like, for example, let's take this antenna I have over here uh, on me. It looks like any other antenna for the 886 megahertz and in theory, it should be working just fine. However, it isn't. Even the first look at the connectors everywhere will tell you that probably everything is fine. But what's not fine? The place when the coax wire gets into the connector got loose over time. And the antenna is just from time to time losing the connection between the, and the feed line and the and the connector. As the result, the range sometimes it's there, sometimes it's, it's not there. So what you should first of all inspect. Inspect if the coax wire that connects antenna to the transmitter is let's say straight, it's not bended too hard, it's not broken, it's not physically damaged. If the antennas are not chipped, are not strangely bended, are not too short or even in some of the cases missing and if all the connectors are not damaged, the wire sits tightly inside of the connector and there are no obvious, almost obvious problems with the connector itself. And in some of the cases you might have mixes the SMA with the RPSMA or RPSMA with SMA. I don't remember right now, but it is possible to connect wrong kind of the antenna to the connector on your transmitter. Everything can happen and because this is a contact sport, yes, the FPV definitely is the contact sport, the physical damage on your radio line, including the connectors, wires and antenna might be a case and before you will go and start to look for less obvious and uh, let's say not that easy to fix problem problems make a detailed ex 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 make a detailed inspection of the wires connectors and the antennas and from my experience usually maybe not the usual but at least in 50 percent of the cases if you are having problems it's a problem connected with one of those 
The next thing that you should check is, well, are you sure the polarization of your antennas match? This is something that might be happening to you if you are relatively new to the FPV hobby and you got the parts, antennas and the whole system from somewhere, maybe even from different sources and you are not really 100% sure what it should be. The rule of a thumb is that the polarization on the transmitter and the receiver antenna has to be the same. That means if we have a circular polarized antennas on the transmitter, we also should have the circular polarized uh, antenna on the receiver, but also if the transmitter has the right hand polarized, the receiver also, also should have the right hand polarized antenna. And for the left hand polarized, you should get the left hand polarized. How to know if the antenna is the right hand polarized of left hand polarized, RHCP versus LHCP? This is actually pretty simple. If the antenna itself is closed, then you should get the text. Okay, let, let, let's, let us focus on the antenna itself saying if this is RHCP or LHCP, like I have on this uh, lollipop or on this menace invader antenna over here, it says RHCP. And you have something like this in anywhere on your transmitter on the, your receiver, you also have to get the exactly same type of a polarization on the other part of the system. If, however, your antenna is open like that, uh, like that, so it's an open clover leaf antenna, while looking at the antenna, check into which side the lobes on the antenna are bended to. If they are going right way, right way up, that means the antenna is right hand polarized. If they would be going the opposite way, the antenna would be left hand polarized. So probably the simplest way to inspect this thing. However, the condition is that the antenna has to be open to be able to see. If the antenna is closed, usually there should be a text somewhere on the antenna saying which polarization is it. Usually, but not always, because for example, the antennas designed for for the DJI FPV system are basically all left-hand polarized, but usually you will not find this text anywhere of, on it, because everybody knows that it should be left-hand polarized out of the box. If you are using the linear polarized antenna, well, there is no right hand and the left hand, it's just that antenna. And the, still, but the polarization, even on the linear polarized linear polarized antennas should match. And that means when you have two antennas, they either have to be vertically or horizontally, but always, always, always install linear polarized antenna vertically and you will be a very happy person. Antenna placement is super important and if done correctly can have dramatic impact on the range of your system. So. With the circular, they are omnidirectional and as long as this is RHCP or LHCP, it should be fine. Yes, in some of the directions of the antenna, like for example on this one, it's radiating very little uh, top and bottom, but still the radiation pattern outside is fine and it can be like that, like that, like that, it will still work just fine. However, with the linear antennas, this will not work, this will not work and something like that will definitely not work, so always parallel to each other and that usually means that they both should be vertical. The next thing that might just be wrong is the subtle yet very critical damage of either of the transmitter on the receiver. Because, for example, because you lost one of the elements and now the transmitter instead of outputting 5 gigahertz, 0 0.8, 0 0.5 is outputting a frequency that, well, it's not really on any of the channels and it's extremely hard for the receiver to pick that up. If there is just a physical damage somewhere in the electronics on the transmitter, you will rather not be able to localize it yourself without having a specialized equipment to be able to pick it up. Also, you might lose the power amplifier. 
VT access usually heat up, they overheat and because heat kills electronic, the power amplifier on the VTX might just be smoked. This can happen either because, well, you are just outputting too much of the power for the module to handle and to be able to dissipate into the surrounding, or for example, you were running the transmitter for too long without the antenna. Antenna is something that takes the radio power and puts it into the ether. If the antenna is not in the best condition or it's missing, all the power that is generated by the power amplifier go back to it and increases the temperature and shortens the life of the, tram tem of the, of the transmitter even more. Similar things can happen on the receiver side, however there are usually no power amplifiers on the receiver side, so you will not damage your receiver by running it without the camera. Still something might went wrong, you might lose something, you might damage something, it might not be even possible to visually inspect it, still it's either listening on a different frequency that it should be or just something went wrong. If you do not have a specialized equipment and bear in mind that even the power meter might not really be good enough to diagnose those shift of the frequencies the best case to find out is it the transmitter is it the receiver is to try with something new uh, so if you excluded the problems with the antennas the antennas match borrow receiver from something new if you are still getting a very limited range on a different receiver than yours because your colleague for example also is getting very limited range when tuned to your own frequency then the problems lie somewhere in the transmitter and this is probably the vtx itself if however your colleague is getting a good reception while your while your reception is not the best at least that means the problem is in the receiver and probably you should replace the receiver if you are sure that the antennas and the feed line and the coax and the connectors are working without any problems. Like I said, majority of the pilots do not have the hardware to be able to exactly diagnose the reason of the problem if this is the vtx or rx what exactly went wrong if the frequency is uh, matching the desired frequency or anything went wrong so usually unfortunately the easiest way to figure out is just to replace one of the components to be sure that the other one is working. If the problem remains, it's the other one. If the problem is solved by replacing one of the elements, then probably what you replace was just faulty. If you checked everything, verified everything, you are sure that both the VTX and the rigs and antennas are fine and still you are not getting the range that you might expect to get, then maybe the problem is on how you are using your video link, not really with the link itself. Because, for example, you might not be aware of the fact, but the altitude on which the receiver and the transmitter and the distance from the ground and other obstacles has a critical impact on the range of the of the link. There is something called the Fresnel zones uh, by the guy called Fresnel, but depends on which part of the world you are, it might be even pronounced Fresnel. Long story short, if things are inside of the of the shape of the football, but not European football, but the American football ball, which is not really a ball business, because it's not round, and the distance between the obstacle and the direct line between the two antennas is just too small, the obstacle influences the link because of the reflections and can really make a huge problem in terms of the distance you are able to go. So, how to solve this problem? Fly higher. And the rule of a thumb, for each kilometer you should have, let's say, a hundred meter of the altitude to be really sure that there is nothing getting into the Fresnel zone. Of course, 
other people might say the otherwise, but the 100 meters per one kilometers is really like to, to be the safest, to really be sure that everything will be fine and nothing will get into the Fresnel zone for sure. Still, if you expect to have a click, 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 Pavel, get yourself together to get a crystal view at one kilometer while maintaining altitude of 10 meters or even less above the ground on your long range quadcopter, then no, probably the physics will just not allow for that. And you will observe that your link is getting much better if you will just fly slightly higher. The last thing to verify is how low is your background noise? How low is the noise floor? Because everywhere around us there are a lot of RF noise on all the frequencies, just on the very, very low power. But depending on where you are flying and how close to other things that might be transmitting on the same frequency that you are using, the noise floor might be higher or lower. And if it's too high, it will just interfere with your link. So on the 5.8 gigahertz, are you sure there is not like uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi anything anywhere? Maybe something like that. Maybe somebody else is flying on the 2.4 gigahertz, maybe other Wi-Fi routers. And when you go even lower, maybe there's something about, let's say, radio beacons or maybe other sources of the high power uh, radio signal close to the frequency you are using. Rule of a thumb, the further away from people and from infrastructure and from homes, buildings, anything you will fly, usually you will get cleaner and better reception. The same link once used in the close to the people and the radio noise people are generating comparing to the place where there is just nobody around can really can have a dramatic difference of the range you might be able to get okay my friends this is all for today i think that my tutorial of how to let's say find the problem with the range of your video feed is helpful and you will be able to use this piece of the information i gave you today for the good cause thank you very much for watching and until the next one bye bye